This is AntiTube. In this video, I'm going to be working on the feed regulator of a Singer Model 1591. I'm going to be explaining uh, what the feed regulator is, what it does, and then I'm going to take it right out of the machine and show you the actual feed regulator. And then I'll be reassembling all the parts to put it back together. So, do you see the feed regulator here? Do you know what a feed regulator is? <laughs> uh, the feed regulator is inside the upright of the machine. And it regulates how far and which direction the feed dog moves between needle strokes. You think of this as the stitch length control. Okay? And, and that's what it's commonly called now. But this uh, feed reversing handle right here is screwed into the feed regulator, which is mounted near the top of the uh, feed forked connection. Feed forked connection. Okay. And when you move the lever down as far as it'll go you're making the feed dog move or cycle in its longest length between needle strokes and as you move up this lever you're gonna you go from six stitches per inch to 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 and even 30 stitches per inch. You finally reach a point where it's kind of zeroed out and the feed dog just goes up and down it doesn't move the fabric and when you get up above that area the feed dog reverses direction and starts moving the fabric towards you instead of away which we call reverse sewing or sewing in reverse or back tacking okay so that's what the feed a regulator does and to get access to it I'm going to remove this um, stitch indicator plate now it's called an indicator plate because you can't see them probably but there's some faded numbers here <laughs> but it indicates where you move the lever and that indicates the setting that you've put it on so that's the purpose of that plate. It's like a cover plate that indicates how long of a stitch or how many stitches per inch you've set at. And the indicator plate is held on to the body with two of these little little screws here. Little round headed screws because it doesn't really bear any weight so it doesn't it doesn't take much to hold the indicator plate on now you're going to see behind the indicator plate is the uh, stitch regulator plate and that regulates how far this will move when you set the stitch regulating thumb screw okay so I'm just going to put the reverse lever in the middle, grab those two plates, and t turn them so I can pull them off here. Okay. Now here is the regulator plate on the back. And you see the kind of design here. And the uh, stitch regulating thumb screw is screwed through a slot in the indicator plate into the regulator plate. So while I've got this off, let me disassemble this. We'll just screw the unscrew the thumb screw so you can see it. Okay. And let me show you the indicator plate and regulator plate first. Very faint numbers here. 6, 8, 10, 12, 20, 15, 30. And then there's kind of a horizontal line here and you get up into the reverse. Okay. 
and then this is the regulator plate. We'll explain some more about that later in the video. I wanted to show you the thumb screw here because it's uh, something I never saw before on here. There's a washer on here that, that uh, so this is the stitch regulating thumb screw. On here is a, th a stitch regulating washer and a stitch uh, reg uh, regulating thumb screw washer and thumb screw bushing. If I can get it off. Let me get the bushing off here first. Oh, they both came off. <laughs> Yay, okay. Two, two little guys. There is the thin washer that goes on first and fits up against the bump screw here. And it's, it's, whoa, <laughs> it's easy to drop and lose, so be careful. It's slightly cupped. It's just slightly cupped like a, a saucer or a dish. Okay, and you you put the cup side toward the machine, and then there's a thicker washer that they call the bushing. It's also easy to lose, <laughs> so caution you again. Okay, a little bit thicker, and the idea of the bushing, I'm thinking is that when you when you screw it through this plate uh, indicator plate into the regulating plate you know it's it, when you move it it slides up and down in this slot so it gives you some cushioning and protection that bushing until you tighten it I think it helps prevent wear and it helps prevent scratching on here I've never I've never seen that uh, bushing uh, part called the bushing on a thumb screw before. So, okay, now we're we're getting up here, and let me move this up here a little bit, and you can see the hmm, feed reversing handle. Okay, this handle screwed right into the regulator. And there's a locking nut to keep it from twisting. And let me show you a picture of that regulator uh, as it's mounted in the machine. Okay. I'll shine a little flashlight on there and you can see the regulator a little bit. And I will move it all the way down, and then I'll put it all the way up, and then into reverse. You can see that piece right there. Now it's held in there with a hinge screw and a friction washer that's installed through the back end of the machine there and it goes right into the feed regulator. And then the feed regulator is mounted to a little slide block. Can you see that? See that? Let me get it out here as far as it will come. You see that little block right there? A little steel block? See it moving a little bit in there? There's a trough on the regulator that the, that the slide block slides into. And that slide block is uh, on a hinge stud right at the base of the fork of the uh, uh, feed fork connection the shaft that goes down to take movement to the feed rock and feed lifting shaft over to the feed dog to make it move. Okay. 
So, let's just uh, go ahead and take this out, okay? I'm going to uh, uh, turn the shaft here to move this uh, connecting rod away from the screw so it won't block the screw, okay? And then I'm going to take my screwdriver in there and uh, see if I can blindly find the slot of the hinge screw. There it is. And this can be pretty tight. <clears throat> Not uncommon that it moves the regulator. Ay, okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, now before I take that all the way out and drop it into the machine, let me see if I can get one of my uh, screw holding screwdrivers into it <clears throat> and then remove it the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Now, the feed regulator might just fall down or slip out. Just going to slip a little bit. There we go. So there is the hinge screw. Let me turn off this light for a moment here. We don't need that. Back this away. We'll take a look at this hinge screw a little bit here. Hinge screw, because there's a smooth place for the mounting side of the regulator to hinge on and this has a friction washer now this type of friction washer is also a cupped washer there's probably a more technical name for it but it's not just a flat washer it's bent up like or bent down in the center if you want to think of it that way like a saucer for a teacup and when you put that on the stud like that and screw it in it pushes back on the screw so that uh, keeps it that friction washer keeps it at the place where you tighten it because if you just put this in and tightened it all the way, this would be hard to move. If it was too loose, it would flop around and maybe shake and move um, the, the feed setting while you were sewing. Right? So you play around with it. I'll be showing you. And then when you tighten it to where you like what feels good and works for you, this friction ring helps keep it in place. Okay? Now... I'm just going to grab that feed reversing handle and slide the feed regulator right off of that. Let me push it back first a little bit in there. You can see the you can see the slide block again here. It looks a little rusty even. But I'm just going to slide this right out now. And there we go. That is the feed regulator. And you can see there's kind of a trough. I don't know what else to call it. It's kind of like a trough there that fits over the slide block and the slide block can slide in that trough. You, you see the back side here that gets screwed to the body with the with the hinge screw that mounting screw and friction ring so that has to hinge see on this side too and then that uh, hole is just where the threads of the hinge screw end up okay so what's what's uh just put that aside for a minute because i want to show you the the, the block here. Let's see if I can get a better angle on it. This this uh, slide block. See it kind of. It can just kind of get my 
finger out of the way. It's just sitting on uh, a hinge stud that goes through this forked feed connection. Uh, feed forked connection, sorry. If you don't know what that is, here's a picture of one. Okay, and that hole at the top was was where this uh, stud comes through to hold this. Now, at this point, you could clean this or oil it if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to take it off. It can be a little tricky or a little bit of a, a pain to get back on. But... Uh, Let's see if I can just go in here with a pair of needle nose pliers and move it to the right and get it off of that hinge stud. There. So that is the slide block of the feed regulator. Okay. Nice steel, steel block and you'll notice uh, this this side the hole has a protrusion that sticks out and the other side is the hole is just smooth with the block and that prot protrusion is what goes up against the forked feed uh, the feed forked connection and let's see where is the feed regulator here Okay, so it's it's uh, sitting like that in the machine, and the slide block goes in that trough I call it, like that. If it can get in there, yeah. Okay, and then that goes on the. You can see that hinge stud right there sticking out. Mm -hmm. That's what it fits on. So it changes the angle of the feed fork connection, which changes the movement of the feed rock shaft and feed lift shaft down below those other two shafts uh, on the sides of the base of your machine okay pretty simple device huh okay now uh, this this can be removed I removed it on some slant needle machines where the where the top is more open I, I don't think I'm gonna take it off here but I did, I did want to take the slide block off just to show you uh, what it looks like. And, uh, oh man, that, thing's, that thing is dry. <laughs> yeah. I could use a little cleaning and some oil. Huh? See, when I put it back together, you have to kind of slide it onto that block. I have, uh, you can see through the machine here, right? that I have the uh, cover plate off the back so I think I'm going to be able to hold the slide block from the back while I put it on. That's pretty much everything about the regulator but one thing that uh, I've done more than anything else with regulators on the machine is replace this part. This lever gets bent and uh, needs replacement and they they screw in this one has that lock nut that just takes a quarter inch open and wrench and we'll put it on there and give it a little twist and then the levers unscrews right from the feed regulator Mm -hmm. 
and that is uh, there's the threaded for it right and there's the pretty heavy duty chrome shaft with the singer part number so that is all of my parts for the feed uh, regulator mm -hmm. and of course I'm gonna go clean them now you know so that uh, I can put them back in and I'm probably going to uh, just clean that post a little bit and the connection mounting place on the side I can just uh, can do that pretty easy if I had some uh, crud cutter I'd do it or this way I'll just take an old um, t-shirt and get some get some alcohol on it and I can go in and clean those parts and uh, because they're inside they, they don't get that bad let me turn this to bring that out of the way and see I'm getting that grease where this part right here was mounted to you can see the black build up of gunk on there so I'll just be cleaning that inside I'll be cleaning the parts and then we'll put it back together it's it's real easy you you can you probably don't even need to to watch it you know you can put it back together yourself that slide blocks a little tricky um, so if you want hang on after I clean this I got to go take my little brush mini brush and brush this stuff out and clean the grease off and I hand rub a light coating of oil uh, on the parts and then this is what I wanted to get to right here see I'll be cleaning that out good my little tiny brushes here okay so uh, hang on and I'll be back with some clean parts and we'll finish up okay all clean and shiny if you've watched very many of my cleaning videos you know I really like clean parts <laughs> and uh, they cleaned up nice they cleaned up easy I just washed this with a, a dish soap and then the other parts I used the crud cutter degreaser on that I always use and then I just hand rubbed a little light coating of oil on the parts and they are very good to go okay and that's what we're going to start with is the slide block getting it back in place here on that stud just a reminder of what that stud looks like there right you see it see it in there and the way I usually do this because there's limited space in there is uh, I use my needle nose to hold it and then I'm just going to kind of push it on sideways from right to left to get it on that uh, stud just like that okay see if I can do this now How's this maybe like that and it's a very tight clearance, so you got to get it just right. There we go. Uh huh. Went on easier than it came off because it's clean. Then I'm just going to kind of pinch it on there uh, with the plier behind the feed forked connection and the slide block to be sure that I get it on there good. Okay. All right. Pretty good. So, now comes uh, the regulator itself, and I found it easier to uh, reassemble the reversing lever uh, into it. You don't have to completely tighten it or 
anything but it's it's easier to hold on to that I'm going to put it in far enough and tighten that nut a little bit so that it doesn't wiggle around because it's it's kind of tricky enough uh, putting the darn feed regulator back onto the uh, slide block right because you know the slide block wants to slide away from you right <laughs> now this I think it might be a little easier than some of them because with that with that uh, access plate off of the back I can slip my finger in there and press on the back of that slide block I'm hoping and keep it from twisting away from me okay and then the regulator gee I wish I had my third hand working today I can rest that light on the camera um, eh. yeah. <laughs> the uh, trough right let me let me actually put a little bit more oil in here so that uh, I can get that slit on a little bit better uh, it has to be really lined up good again because the clearance with that slide block and this uh, tray or trough is real close and there's not much room there's a little arm in the in the casting right here that the uh, hinge stud goes through to go into here so it's kind of a narrow uh, space but uh, let's see if I can hold that hinge block in position and put my trough of that feed regulator on there I have to get it inside of this piece you know otherwise it won't go forward and you, and you, you got to line it up good with that uh, slide block and, and stick your tongue a little bit out on the left side and wiggle it and there there we go so that was one of the easier uh, slide blocks that I've ever done. So there it is. Let's slide that. I get that oil worked on a little bit. Oh, it's nice and clean, isn't it? So look at that. Wow, that's nice. Okay. Next, now I'm going to put in this um, stud and the. Uh, connecting link here kind of blocks the hole for for the hinge screw so I'm just gonna turn this to bring that link forward to make a place for the screw to go in and then first I'm going to just stick a barbecue stick in there and kind of uh, kind of line it up See if I can line that up with the hole um, right about there. Get that Oop, slip down a little bit. Now that I got oil on the slide block, <laughs> it wants to it wants to slide right out of position. <laughs> you rascal you there let me stick that in there just for a moment and show you what I'm talking about see how I've got the barbecue stick there lined up and it's actually it's actually going all the way through the regulator and that's what we need is to try and keep that there and lined up so I can pull the stick out and put the put the hinge screw in so I'm going to prep the hinge screw and get it uh, ready like so so that I can get it in there and give it a few turns and now we're going to see if I can 
slip this out without losing my oh, 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 position. Yeah, oh, it's going to go. Yep, see it slide down there? So let me get that in there. And then I'm going to try and slide that up into place this way and line up. Uh, how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about holding that electric flashlight with my mouth. <laughs> so, because if that, if that was a shocking experience, I wouldn't be too happy. Since it's one thing I learned as a phone man was don't put live wires in your mouth. <laughs> that ringing current would get you. This is usually this is usually somewhat easier. So it's kind of funny that I got it on the slide block so nicely. And now I'm having a little bit more uh, trouble. Okay, let's let's see if I can move this up a little I had the uh, screw in there to the regulator threads once but uh, the, they didn't want to go in so I was a little crooked there we go there's th there okay now I've got it threaded properly so now I can use my Chapman screwdriver and finish that installation of that hinge screw. See how it's starting to move the regulator now? Now, this, that hinge screw, how hard you tighten it or how tight you tighten it, that is what sets the stiffness of the reversing lever. You don't want it flopping around or so loose that it vibrates out of position while you're sewing. But you don't want it over tightened so that you're, you know, you can't even move this lever. So you want to find a good compromise. And if you tighten this as hard as you can, you're not going to be able to move the lever. <laughs> so you have to experiment a little bit, you know, with it and make it a tiny bit tighter, a tiny bit looser, and see what feels good to you. That feels really good to me. It's nice and firm, but it's not overly hard to push. Okay, great. Very nice. Okay, then the last thing I wanna do is line up the lever and tighten that uh, locking nut with the quarter inch wrench so that it uh, it won't twist and turn on me there we go just a little bit of tightening so that it will stay there there we go all back together look at that now um, let me get my tri-flow uh, superior lubricant with PTFE <laughs> and let me lubricate that a little bit uh, I put a little bit of oil on there but what I want to do is get in there on the left side of the regulator and on to that trough that the slide block is in and just just put a drop in there and then behind the slide block at the top I want to put a drop so that it gets on that hinge stud in there then I'll work this work this in a little bit okay looks good and then between the uh, right side of the regulator where it hinges against the the frame of the machine 
I want to just slip a drop up on top of that uh, space there and go ahead and let that get worked in. Now if you do this and all of a sudden this gets kind of floppy or too easy <laughs> to, to move and you want it a little firmer, just remember anytime you want you can just remove the hand wheel on the machine and uh, you don't even remove the cover plates if you don't want. Just remove the hand wheel so you get access to that hand screw and just give it a little bit of tightening or loosening and you can adjust it to your liking. Okay, very nice. See how easy that went back together actually and uh, let's go ahead and I've got my little cup to washer and I've got my bushing washer on there so I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, regulator plate and put it behind the uh, oops yeah like that and put it behind the indicator plate kind of line it up there All right and you see where that nut is then I can put my uh, stitch regulating thumb screw in there and snug it up which just allows these two pieces to go on easier then I'll slip it over the reverse lever and lift it up a little bit and use that lever to kind of hold it up uh, near where the screws gonna go okay then all I've got to do is put in those two little lightweight uh, mounting screws for the indicator plate they start start down here at the bottom mm -hmm. see if I can get that lined up clearly there we go there's the bottom one and get the other one in and then I'm just gonna once I get them both in there I give them each a little bit of a turn with a regular screwdriver to make sure that they're snug but you sure don't need to over tighten these I mean they're just holding this they're just holding this uh, indicator plate to the machine that's it that's their job you know so they're not they're not supporting weight they're not doing anything like that so it's just a cover plate really indicator so I'll snug them up with that and then let's see here's a little screwdriver I'll just go in and just make sure that they're uh, snugged up mm -hmm. there we go and this one oh I already got that plenty snug okay there we go so we can test it out here we'll set a stitch loosen this we'll pick our stitch length and then push this up till it stops and tighten it right and that's going to lock in that stitch length mm -hmm. see can't go past it then if we want to reverse we'll lift up the reverse lever and that uh, mm, regulating bracket the curved slot is going to stop it at the same so if you're down here and you're on a number 12 stitch if you go to reverse it it's going to be sewn a number 12 stitch in reverse very nice it's working properly Yay! All set. That's the stitch regulator and the corresponding parts, I guess you could say, on this Singer Model 1591 named Ike.
Thank you so much. I hope I hope you learned a little bit of something there, or at least you were entertained. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that this cover plate was off. You can see the back of the stitch regulator uh, in here. Let's see. Uh, I get my pointer. See the slide block right there, the lighter colored metal. Mm -hmm. And it's mounted to the a feed forked connection right there. And there's the regulator itself. And then with the hinge stud coming through the back from behind. Uh, let's put this up on a block here. <laughs> From behind the hand wheel. Mm -hmm. See it in there? All shiny and clean. <laughs> okay, feed regulator. More than you ever wanted to know about a feed regulator. Thanks again. I hope you'll come back and catch some of my other videos when you have time. Mm -hmm.